and amidst all the instability in the Middle East in the wake of Hosni Mubarak's resignation, one radical leader in the neighborhood has decided to fan the flames of war in what can only be described as a shocking interview on Sunday. Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi called on Muslims to band together and wage war against the United States and Israel. Now, Gaddafi was quoted as saying, the white color has decided to get rid of the green color. These countries should be united against the white color because all of these white countries are the enemies of Islam. So tonight, we ask the question, is radicalism on the rise in the Middle East, and what should be done to stop extremists from seizing power in the region? Here with analysis are Robert Spencer from Jihad Watch and the president of the American Together Foundation, Michael Gauss. Michael, I know you, you're quoted as saying that, that you think this is a great thing for the Middle East. Let's say, just presume for a second, you are wrong, and that radicals arise in Egypt. What does that mean if you're wrong? Well, assuming that I am wrong, Sean, radicals could take over and it could turn what happened in Iran. But that is not going to happen because in Egypt, what you're looking is the democratic forces. If you have watched what happened on Friday prayers, the Muslims were praying in the middle and they were shielded by the Christians. And there was a tank. On the tank, there was a Coptic Christians with a cross and a crescent. They were moving. They're a very cohesive society. I think they are not going, the radicalism is not going to come. And brotherhood does not have a strong foothold in Egypt. All the people that are rising are the young people, Twitter and Facebook people, who have tasted the freedom. They see what Americans do, the freedom. And yeah. they want that freedom. They're right. not going to put up with radicalism. Robert, nobody knows what's going to happen here. You know, somebody writes on a, on a forum this weekend, Hannity's obsessed with the Muslim Brotherhood. We don't know. But we do know the opinions of the Egyptian people are that they support Sharia, they support Islam as part of the new government that is going to be formed. And as a result, I don't hold out a lot of optimism. So what if I'm right and Michael is wrong? Well, I think you are right and Michael is wrong. Unfortunately, uh, what he offers as evidence for the, uh, the moderation or the pro-democracy sentiment among Egyptians really amounts to nothing. The Christians shielded Muslims while they were praying. Well, of course, the Christians have been ferociously persecuted by Muslims in Egypt. There was just a bombing uh, recently in a church, a horrific number of dead. And so the Christians know they have to protect themselves. They have to show that they're not going to, not some kind of a threat to the Muslims. You know, any, any threatened community would act in the same way. And the idea that the Brotherhood does not enjoy popular support is completely belied by the fact that in the first place, the Brotherhood is the largest opposition group in Egypt. There is no large organized secular democratic opposition. 95% of Egyptians, 95%, according to a Pew Research Center poll conducted in the spring of 2010, thought that it was a good idea that Islam should play a large role in politics. Obviously, that's an open door for the Brotherhood to step right, in so, and to make uh, Egypt into an Islamic state. And, and, and a significant percentage, 85 percent also, according to polls, believe that Sharia should govern Egypt. So, uh, you know, exactly. I'm just, I'm, Michael, we're just looking at the numbers here. The numbers show where the Egyptian speak, uh, people, where their mindset is. So why why do you have this this optimism when you have no foundation for it except you feel, you perceive, when, when the Ayatollah was put in power in Iran, we were told by the media in this country, the New York Times, we were told by the Carter administration, you know, somebody actually compared him, the, the Ayatollah out of exile from France as Gandhi. Well, Sean, first of all, the brotherhood, what Robert Spencer, the statistics he quoted, may be true, and that was the case a few years back, but this revolution is not done by brotherhood. They're not significant, and the common people are going to take over the governance because they're a major force. Michael, they stood you don't their know ground. That. You're speculating. They did not walk away. You're speculating. The, the, the people of Egypt, as we're pointing out in these polls, feel they're very differently. How old are the polls, Sean? That is the question. 20, 2009, How are 2000, the, polls? the Pew poll was 2010. I would rely on people, but if anything, Spencer spits out is nothing. There is no truth in what Spencer says. Spencer's, he, he, he he just so. Spencer's quoting sells, a poll that exists. He sells hits, and that's how he makes his living. That information is unreliable. 
All right, so okay, I, so sure. Attack me because you can't refute the Pew poll, and so you try to just shoot the messenger. This is a very common no, thing this, that Islamic supremacists do to try to deceive Americans. They no, no, just you lie. are deceiving and Americans, Robert. You have a responsibility to lie Robert, to Americans. It's you make your livelihood by of selling Islam. hate. If you think that Islam is under threat, then according to the Quran, you have to deceive the unbelievers. So I understand what you're doing, but don't expect anybody to buy no, no, Robert. It, it, it. The Pew Research Center poll from spring 2010 is public information. I'm not fabricating it. It's readily available to anybody who wants to look at it. And to, to try to turn the attack on me just shows the desperate uh, lack of evidence no, no, no. to support the position you, that you have. Robert, you are using desperate measures, telling that Quran tells people <laughs> to lie. That is a total fabrication. Yes, that's chapter that three, is verse a blatant lie, Robert. Chapter three, no verse holy book tells anybody to lie. You are look lying, man. Chapter 3, verse 28. What does chapter 3, verse 28 say, Robert? It says, do not take unbelievers as your friends and protectors in preference to believers unless you're doing it to guard yourselves against them. In other words, according to Ibn Kathir, a very noted Muslim commentator on the Quran, that, that in let you guard yourselves against the unbelievers by pretending to take them as your friends. And he says, we smile in the faces of some people, but behind their backs we curse them. That's an Islamic interpretation of that uh, Quran passage, not something I made up. And Michael Gauss that, can't deny well, that it is your interpretation, he's Robert. going to be lying to us again. No, Robert, that is your interpretation. What Ibn Kathir said was his. Look it, it up. Not it's in, in the Quran. Quran. I gave now, you the Quran. I gave you chapter people. and verse. Robert, I gave you Robert, Ibn Kathir. Look it up. People. It's all there. Robert, right, be truthful to, to the American people. Read the verses before and after, and you tell the truth to the American right. people. we got to run. Guys, thanks for being with us. And right. Coming up, the results are in from this weekend's straw poll.